The Sentinel is a highly mobile character with low health and body mass that is really good at critical strikes. And we're going to use four curses on the case of Dal Zog here so that we can unlock uh, level two of this. All right, here we go. Eliminate the Lords of the Void. If it's your first time seeing this, we have to eliminate monsters here, namely 400 of them for the first Lord of the Void to appear. Once we beat all five Lords of the Void, we win. And oh, I just realized I had to like manually move my cursor to aim it. I'm so used to these things being auto aim. This guy does really good damage. He's critting fairly frequently. And even when he doesn't, he does great damage. I think I might actually really like this character. They seem pretty strong, at least against the early goblins. They're doing great things. This is a really good first level up. We get a uh, epic power multicast, which makes it so we have an extra 48% chance of my shoot skill here to fire twice which is good because that's just more extra arrows for us to use to obliterate these little guys coming at us here. Another level up already. The frag shot fires a shot in the direction I'm facing, which will pierce through enemies in a line dealing 312 damage, and then it will break into two secondary bolts, which deal another 188 damage and apply for Jilly, which is basically an effect that increases all damage received by the enemies by 3% uh, for six seconds. So that will be our second skill that we will use, and that will shoot in front of us. We can, uh, I think it only fires every like five or six seconds or so. I'm waiting to see it fire there. Show me the frag shot. There it is. Wow, it really, it goes through quite a few of them before it uh, explodes in the distance. It's almost like off the screen. There it is. Got a nice visual of it that time. We do have low health, so take, uh, taking an extra 30 health is not a terrible choice for us considering my other uh, choices for that level up or commons. Here's our first elite here. He's his little spell casting dude. I want to try and shoot him down from a distance. We murdered him so quickly. This character seems very strong. I am going to be be real with you. They seem quite good. Nothing blowing my mind here. All commons. I'm actually going to go ahead and get the touch of ice because uh, sometimes applying slow can be useful. Getting one or two touch of ices is not a terrible choice for us. This is my first time seeing the rot uh, stats effect. The bladed shocker. You throw a shocker in the target direction, dealing 62 damage, which is not much, but you also apply rot to any target's hit. And once it gets to the end of its range, it will come back to you, hitting them again. So you can effectively double that. And uh, it applies rot, which does 200, which does sorry, which does 625 damage over 15 seconds, which is a decent amount. But most importantly, if the target dies, any remaining rot will spread to a uh, nearby enemy, so it's not like going to get wasted. So I think we'll get that and see if we can maybe get some. Some kind of like rot build going here seems weird that like a ranger who's like in tune with nature would use rot as their game mechanic but hey you know what i'm rolling with it all right so we're hitting them we're trying to hit them with as much rot as we can and i do see these green lines going around so it's like spreading it the levels of earlier very very fast all right i can increase the attack speed of my frag shot skill by 20 percent, so that'll be firing with a greater frequency which will be useful i think we're going to notice the rot a lot more once we have like more enemies on the screen because right now it's it, it doesn't fire occasionally but i think for the most part i'm just kind of like murdering with my other stuff first i've got a rare power here for area of effect that'll make all three of my current weapons because they're all projectiles have an extra 30 percent size which is good that way i don't have to aim as precisely i'm just more likely to have the big hitbox hit the things i want them to hit and my beautiful green purpley goodness can do what it wants to i will break this for resources thank you very much this guy is here but i am like crazy good at critical strikes and melting these elites yeah just just absolutely handled Love to see that. The Bomb Barrage has three types. If you look down here, right here, it has three types in common with each of the other skills I already have, which is pretty good. And it fires 10 bombs in an area in front of me, each causing 87 damage, which individually is not much, but total it's like 870, and applies weakness. And weakness increases all damage the enemies receive by 3%, and the damage received from negative effects by an extra 3% for six seconds. So that'll kind of like make my rot more damaging as well, I think, is how that'll work. Also my other attacks too, so. We're going to try the bomb here and that was another quick level. Holy crap. I'll take a rare uh, area of effect for bomb, increase its uh, area of effect by 30%. That sounds pretty good. And there's the bomb effect right there. Just uh, kind of shoots out in a big like cluster in front of us and fires fairly frequently. I, I think that's a made a good life choice here. I think we're scaling rather nicely as we kind of bully these poor goblins. You deal with mostly goblins for quite a while, it feels like, actually. I'm like, I'm level 10. We're still just dealing with goblins. Uh oh, here comes the first Lord of the Void, uh, Kythes the Prophetess. I can't remember I can dodge. I've been busy playing. Uh, we are melting your hit points. Holy crap, we're strong. We got three dashes. The whole point of this character is they've got insane mobility, and they're, apparently their damage is cracked because they're doing great things melting bosses. Ooh, good choices. Man, like, it's, it's, they're, these are all really good choices. I guess I'll go for the epic because 
I love me some multicast, but going for the crit damage modifier by 36% is also tempting. I also have plenty of movement speed, so this is good too, but we'll go for an extra 16% multicast chance. That way we'll have uh, odds of things triggering multiple times. Another level up here. I don't love any of these, so I'm actually going to re-roll and hope for uh, something better here. I'm going to re-roll again because I don't love what's happening here either. All right, so I think we're running low on good choice here. I only have two re-rolls left. I kind of want to save them. And I'm curious about the poison cloud. Someone's a moving poison cloud that applies poison every 0.5 seconds to enemies caught within, which is 500 damage over 15 seconds, which is not insignificant. It does have a very long cooldown, though, and only one type in common with the things I have down here. But I just want to try it out because I'm curious, does it like, follow me around? If it follows me around, that's like a little area protection around me a little bit. Leviathan Uncommon will increase my damage by 20%. But subtract 10% from my movement speed. But I already have plus 35% movement speed, so losing 10% is not a big deal. I will take Leviathan for some extra damage to make sure we're doing even more great things here. Let's take out this elite first and then try and pay attention to my little poison cloud. There it is. So it's just, oops, almost got hit by that thing. So wait for it to summon here and there it is. It didn't summon on top of me. I think it multicast and hit two. So it kind of like summons a little bit near me and then like moves around. So it's not something that's going to like be able to like protect me, but it might be all right. Do I really care about increasing the area modifier of the poison cloud by 20%? You know what? I will. What if I can get like my poison things to like cover the entire world? Could be useful here. Although the first area of effect upgrade modifier, I mean, actually it is fairly noticeable. That's a very large poison field. And you know what? That could be useful. I could ignore shooting there and let that take them out for me. The poison bolt will fire five uh, poison projectiles in the direction I'm facing, getting uh, poison to enemies in an area. It's only 218 damage over 15 seconds, but it's only got 3.4 second cooldown, which I think I like better than the cluster bomb because I already have a lot of things that are like bombing the area in front of me. I want this thing for range to reach the bosses really far away. So we're gonna go for a poison bolt because I need more things that can like, you know, damage from a distance and damage over time. I think it's gonna be pretty useful against the bosses later on. And right, here we go. We're just gonna shoot our little, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they work like kind of like a firebolt, just like nice long range for us. We don't need more explosions in, in like the right in front of us area, which the other thing would have done. We're, we're fine there. Hmm, increase my critical damage chance by 5%. It's already at 19%. I might as well uh, turn up to 24% and just, we are supposed to be the crit machine. That's this whole, this guy's whole thing is they are fast and they're a crit monster. Hello, epic thing. Increase the area of effect of all frontal type attacks, which is five of my things by 40%. So five of my weapons are going to have an extra 40% area of effect, which is great. So it's much more likely that my things are going to trigger and hit enemies. I feel like fairly happy with all the skills that I have. I don't really want to trade them out, although the Chaos Golem is very good. But we're just going to go ahead and go for passive power-ups from, from here on out. We'll just pass those by every time. Increases the damage modifier of the shoot skill by an additional 30%. I think I do want to take that and uh, have that put some more damage out there for us and have my arrows do a lot of damage because I feel like the air the arrows are like they're they're real big damage dealers pretty big fan of these things increase my crit damage modifier by an additional 24% takes it all the way up to 244% extra damage when I do a crit so we're doing almost two and a half times as much damage when we land these beautiful crits increase the damage modifier of the bladed chakram by an additional 30% I will take that and now the rot will do 875 damage over 15 seconds. So between the rot and the poison, we've got a lot of damage over time going on here. Also another immediate level up here. Going to go for the passive power-ups. Ooh, a rare attack speed upgrade for the shoot uh, skill will make it have an extra 30% attack speed. So we'll shoot those arrows more frequently, which is good because I feel like they're doing a lot of damage for me. Also, they apply for Jilly, which makes all other damage that they get hit by uh, even more damaging. I think that can stack to be like a lot more so we're we're all about that noise up in here you know what i'm gonna pass up on the block power and i'm gonna go for, go for fragility an extra 10 percent chance of applying fragile targets on every attack so we can just stack all kinds of fragility that way the first hit doesn't take them out the 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 ones falling that get extra bonus damage to really melt them very effectively man the levels just don't cut I, I i i swear 80 percent of this game is like choosing your level ups rather than actually playing it's great. Increase the multicast chance of the skill Bladed Chakram by an additional uh, 48%. So we're going to just be applying rot on these guys like crazy. If one dies, they'll sp they'll spread their pain to the others. I'll, re I'll replace the pa with passives here. Nothing great. So I'm going to go for the critical damage chance by an extra 5%, putting it up at 29%. So almost one out of three uh, hits will be crits, which is great for us because they do a lot more damage. Another almost instantaneous level up. All common, so again, I'll go for the 10% chance of applying Fragile, so it should be 20% chance of applying Fragility now. So, like, the damage uh, stacking is going to be very good up in here, and great things are going to happen for us. I see this Elite over here, and I don't want to deal with your 
spell casting shenanigans. So I'll take advantage of my insane mobility and just do like 5,000 damage to you. No, no, no problem. Also, they changed the, in a recent update that happened, I think, today or recently, last few days. They changed the way like the damage numbers show. They like instead of like I hit this guy three times and it shows you the three, three different numbers, it like adds them all up over. So that 5,000 wasn't all simultaneous. It was all the total damage in a few seconds I hit him. We've got a rare damage increase here for the nature type. So both these spells down here will deal an extra 30% damage, which is going to be more uh, poison cloud and poison bolt damage. So that's great because I'm probably going to rely on uh, the poison and the rot pretty heavily to damage over time the later bosses. I think we replace all these. Ooh, a rare damage increase of a straight 15% more damage. I think we take that. And now we do an extra 60% flat damage, which is just fantastic. 60% total. It was 45% before that uh, upgrade. And then we keep uh, murdering and wrecking these guys. Like, there's barely any enemies on the screen. That's how strong we are right now. I think we'll go for the uncommon uh, attack speed uh, upgrade here for the Bladed Chakram. So that way it will have an extra 20% attack speed. So more of that rot. Ooh, the rot's up to 950. Love that for us. We're going to be doing all kinds of rot damage on these fellas. Another almost instantaneous level up. I'm going to go ahead and give everything an extra 20% damage at the cost of 10% of my movement speed. So now we have an extra 80% damage, but my movement speed modifier is only plus 15%. I'm not sure why that's red. Maybe because my character by default has a plus 20% movement speed. Um, I should be sacrificing all my movement speed here, but hey, you know what? I still feel fairly quick and I have three dashes. Replace this. I already have one touch of ice. And um, I, I don't think I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and get a uh, cast frequency modifier by 5% because I do like having my things attack more often. Here's the second uh, Lord of the Void here, Alfred the Fallen King. Got to watch off his attacks. Hit him with all my damage over time and my frailty and my arrows. And we're melting his hit points very effectively. He's getting caught in little guys and he's dead within a matter of moments. Easy. Easy. We're so strong. I'm tempted to get the uncommon here for the poison cloud, but Venomous would give every attack I do a 30% chance of poisoning for 144 damage or 15 seconds. So I'm actually going to go for Venomous here because that might that affects all my attacks rather than just one. Ooh, a rare Leviathan, an extra 30% damage, but lose 15% of my movement speed. Oh, I guess we're going to be a normal speed person now because we're taking that. That's a lot of extra damage. I will replace these and I will increase the damage modifier of the poison cloud over here by 30%. It's at 960 right now. We, we get this. Oh, level up. And uh, now we're up to 1080 over 15 seconds. That's good damage. The damage modify the poison cloud again. I will do it. Make that poison cloud more poison up to 1200 damage over 15 seconds. That's fantastic value. All right. How's my movement speed? Literally at 0%. I wouldn't mind increasing that a little bit, but our damage is insane. 110% default damage without even getting a crit. And then I think that gets multiplied by uh, 2.44%. Uh, oop, I took six damage somehow when we uh, get a, a crit. So we're just we're, we're putting up massive numbers here. Get away from me, explodey dudes. All right, I need to go get some health or something. Starting to feel the lack of speed, though. I might want to get some speed if I get like a rare offering for one. That's right, I get hit points back when I level up. I will take a, an uncommon relentless to increase the cast frequency modifier of all my skills by 10%. So we'll be firing more often here. I'm going to have to use my... Uh, Dash is more here that we no longer have the extra movement speed. What are you? What are you? And why are you just standing there? Just get bodied on the damage, though. I melted that elite so fast. It's not even funny. We are a strong boy here doing strong boy things. But yeah, I can feel the lack of speed. I man, I really regret losing the speed sometimes. But damage, though, for a second there, I thought the little shock rums returning to me were like enemy attacks. Nope, those are mine. There's so few enemies on the screen. Am I just really that strong? Seems like it. Like, seriously, where are the enemies at? It's <laughs> just murdering them all too, so quickly. None of these. I don't want to trade these out. I'm happy with what we have. I don't want to lose any more speed. I'm already feeling too slow. In fact, I'd like to get some speed back. All my attacks have 20% chance of applying Doom, and Doom causes 84 damage over, after 5 seconds, which isn't much, but it's all my attacks. And I shoot out lots of attacks, so this might actually be useful. And if they get enough Doom on them, they will uh, insta-die here. I'm almost tempted to go to, like, a corner of the map and like murder enemies quicker to sp speed things up a little bit. Somebody told me in the comments that like if you go to the corner of the map and just like wreck them over here, it's uh, like it, it's, there's more like you get it done faster, although I feel immediately overwhelmed with enemies. So perhaps that's a bit on the dangerous side. I guess like the elites that are really scaring me here, but we're doing fantastic damage to them. I need to be careful to not get hit with that poison. All right, note to self, uh, I, maybe I'm not as overpowered as I thought, or just maybe the bad timing doing that right as those two uh, dangerous elites appeared. The, the Venom Elites seem to be the one that, is, that are most dangerous for me. Ooh, this is nice. Uh, epic uh, power of the multicast. Increases the multicast chance of all your skills type frontal by an extra 36%, which is f like 5 out of 6 of my abilities. 
are going to be multicasting uh, even more frequently, which is fantastic for us. We want all the multicasts. Where do those elites go? Did I murder them already? Probably, I guess. All right, maybe try this corner strategy again here for murdering them as they appear on the screen. Although it definitely feels more dangerous. I feel like increasing the damage modifier of the shoot skill is not that useful since it only does 120 damage. So the real value of it, I think, is the fragility. But if we increase the damage modifier of the frag shot, that could be a little more substantial because it does 525 the first time. So we'll increase that and it'll be now doing 600 damage. So that seems perhaps better. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh oh, maybe being here when a boss is on the screen is not great. Where's this boss at? I don't know, but he's shooting a lot of things. Oh, there he is. OK, yep. I'm seeing the danger of being in the corner. The boss being summoned, we are absolutely melting your hit points, though. But something really sent me flying. There's these elites. They are problematic. The boss is already dead. That must have been like my poison or time. I've never melted boss bosses this quickly. It's my first time playing as this character. Hmm. These seem interesting, but I will pass that up. I will increase my cast frequency modifier by 10%. Yes, please. I do want that. Ow, stop blowing me up, bomb guys. Cast frequency modifier by an extra 15% again. Yes, that is absolutely what I want. Another level up. Ooh, legendary. Increase the multicast chance of the skill frag shot by 60%. I will take that. That seems good. Get these poison guys out of here. What is my multicast chance at, at now? It's actually only at 16% because I think most of them were like based on like the, the type of the skill itself rather than like a flat across all of them. But we're doing great things here, like spamming attacks and nonsense everywhere. And I'm, I'm feeling rather strong here. Are those elites? Nope, just uh, like tough and hearty little wolves. I don't even have to focus on shooting them down. I can shoot them once and then my poison stuff will probably take them out. Replace these with passives. Getting the more crit damage modifier is really tempting. But I'm going to go for a cast frequency modifier. You know what? No, crit damage. Well, the whole point of this guy is that he's a crit monster. So let's let's uh, let's lean into that. Now we do 680% uh, crit damage. So make my crits more critical, if if you would. I like how the wolves howl when they like come on the screen there. But all I got to do is shoot them once and then focus on shooting other things. And I think the damage over time takes them out. So that's pretty great. And elites handled. They're nothing. Oh, OK. I don't like being I also don't like being near the edges, the corners. It's just it seems to just be getting me hurt more than anything. I like the mobility of the middle. Even makes it take a little bit longer to get the job done. Get away from me, explodey dudes. You're the worst. I'm not feeling quite as overpowered anymore. The enemies are getting a little bit more tankier. They're not dying instantly, probably because I've like put a lot of points into like damage over time. So they're not going to like melt instantly from my attacks. Uh oh, boss is coming in. Ooh, the rear power critical damage modifier is tempting, but we have an area of effect that affects five of my things. So anything with missile type gets an extra 40% area of effect, that's, which is great. That's literally five out of my six things. So we're going to have all kinds of that. Also, Colmeth, the Incarnation of Ice with 219,000 hit points is chilling over here. I need to hit you with a bunch of attacks before I get pushed out of the area. That was, did I see like 44,000 on there? That was so much damage. And I can just dance around and fight. We're doing so much damage over time with my... Uh, all my stats effects, all I gotta do is hit him a little bit, and then the damage over time takes him away when I'm not even there. Just get absolutely bodied, wrecked. I'm starting to really feel the lack of movement speed, and I would really like to get, like, 20% of that back. Ooh, hello, green thing. Do I run the damage modifier of the shoot skill by 30%? I don't feel like that would make that big of a difference at this point. In fact, I'd rather go for cast frequency by 5%. You know what? No, multicast by 4%. I'll take that instead. I don't want any of these. Replace this. I will increase the area modifier by 10% of all my skills and projectiles. That seems fine. Well, I could have gone for that crit that was next. It would have been uh, tempting too, but... I have a hard time resisting like higher rarity compared to lower rarity. It's just so good. Now we're doing pretty well though. We're at max health. We seem to be melting our enemies pretty quickly between the the, oh, the on hit damage. Hello, elite spiders. They're quick. I do have the dash. I am the dashy boy. Got a lot of the dashes. The spiders are back there. I'm just racking up 38,000, 40,000 damage. Just handled. Easy. Hmm. Reducing all damage taken by two might not be awful for us. I mean, it's rare. I'll, I'll take uh, I'll take it. Now we have a flat reduction of three on all damage. So that, that, maybe that'll add up. See, I only took two damage from the bomb guy. Honestly, getting like five damage flat reduction would make the bomb guys basically like inconsequential. So I'm kind of into that idea because, well, they're annoying and hard to dodge. Well, when you're slow anyways. I like how this guy is supposed to be fast, but I'm slow because I greed for damage, which is kind of paying off for us. Let's be real. I'm melting bosses like they're nothing. Ooh, an extra 24% critical damage modifier. I will take that. It brings us up to 292%. We are almost up to triple crit damage on top of the effectively what double damage we already have how's that work so an extra six damage in total hello spider not spider but like snake dude and you're dead elite just gone melted you are inconsequential and uh, gone okay easy 
Easy handling. We are melting elites faster than I think I ever have before. I think the I think the rot and the spreading of the rot might be a big factor in why like there's less enemies on the screen than there normally are. It's pretty good. Also, we are very close to summoning the fifth Lord of the Void. I didn't realize I already summoned five of them. I thought I only summoned three. Maybe it's, maybe number like number four or five is the one that's up next. I think it is. Yeah. None of these replace. You know, I will go for twenty five percent chance of adding burn. It's not a lot of damage over t uh, time. Only one hundred twenty six. But like every attack I hit with what them with has a chance of doing a uh, burn over time so that's 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 great for us just sitting here doing thousands upon thousands of damage to these enemies in a matter of moments handling them like they're nothing which is good because that fourteen thousand damage in that one guy even the regular guys oh my god why are you so close no 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 okay ha, 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 no no dash 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 yikes i was i was on my dashes were on cooldown he was right there spawning next to the edge this is dangerous i need these elites gone before i worry about the boss i think would be good melted them oh no no not this giant huge swath of an attack that you do okay we're we're doing so much damage to him i have never seen these bosses melt so fast that was actually crazy i don't know what kind of insane combination of damage we have here but it's doing great things and this is with four curses on i will increase my critical damage modifier by 12 percent. yes please that way we have surpassed the the triple mark seems good choose a portal wait that was the final boss escape the void or go deeper you know we're going deeper you have to right Ooh, they changed the visuals. It looks good. Is purple go deeper? Yeah, purple's go deeper. This is like the infinite endless mode. We go until we die. I ain't no chump. Why is there three little things here? Oh, that's right. They re that's right. They reworked the endless system. It's different now. So basically, it's no longer something two simultaneously. It's like we got we got hit 400 to summon one and there'll be less and eventually just be more and more until we're just like fighting nothing but like five Lords of the Void at once or something. If we're in the correct one, I don't know which one we're in right now. You know what? I will increase the damage modifier, the poison bolt skill by 30%. It's at 360. We take it, and now it's at 405, and it may not seem like a dramatic amount when I do like 44,000 damage to kill one like healthy unit, but it's 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 going to add up to just insane damage over time. It's going to be amazing and great for us, and we're going to feel healthy and strong. Even these little goblins are just sitting on, what, 10,000 10, hit points? That's a lot. They are very tanky in endless mode. That's kind of the points. I don't want to replace my skills. I'm very happy with what we have. I would want, I want some speed, really. I have 102 block which is only a 2% chance to block attacks. So I feel like getting eight more is not gonna make a big difference, but for science, I will take it. Now we're at 110 block power, and now I have a 9.1% chance to block attacks. So that actually was, so like for every one block power you get, that's almost 1% chance to block an attack. So that's not awful actually. <gasps> Agility. I mean, crit damage chance by 5% is nice, but let's get my speed back here. Once you get to endless mode, once you get to endless mode, you really need that speed. Before endless mode, you can be fine with a little bit less speed and relying on dashes. Once you get here, you need movement speed and you need your dashes, because, like, they they ain't playing around here. You gotta be quick, boys. You gotta be zooming. I will take an extra 10% cast frequency modifier, because to beat these guys, you just need to... It's, it's all about surviving against these, like, like roided up Lords of the Void we'll be facing here. Replace with passives. Increase area modifier by 10%. Increase area effect. I I don't think I need more area effect. I think I'll go for crit damage chance, even though it's just a common. Now we're up to 34% crit damage chance, a little over one in three chance of hitting with the crits. Because my area is probably mostly fine on most things. But my DPS is going to very quickly become insufficient if we don't uh, focus as much as possible. Vicious strikes, 100% uh, chance to deal a critical strike on enemies with full health. I think I'll take it. It might be kind of wasted in a lot of regards, because I feel like a lot of my attacks and hits are small in damage. But it's still... Every little itty bitty bit will help, I think. Legendary increases the multicast chance of the poison bolt skill by 60%. I do now wait. That'll be a 96% total multicast chance. So like almost guaranteed to multicast every single time, right? That seems quite good. Here's our first elite down here. Oh, hello, level up. Um, none of these, please. Oh, that's really good. A 40% chance, a 40% uh, damage increase of all missile types. So that's that's gonna be a massive damage increase for us. That ep epic damage increase upgrade gonna be really good. Five of my weapons just got really strong. Just 100,000 damage on you. 180,000. Oh, okay, you're dead. We did good at melting the elite. That's a good sign. Ooh, the rare Leviathan is tempting, but I just can't afford to take away any movement speed right now. So instead, I'll go for the magnet. Gives it 15% more XP modifier, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll have uh, more pickup range on the XP. Not that we really needed it. We were doing, doing fine without it. Hello, agility. Movement speed increased by 10%. Fantastic. Now we're back up to 20%, our, our default number for this character. I think 20% is probably, like, the minimum I'd want 
I'd probably prefer like 30 or 40 percent, really. Once these bosses come out, you'll see they're not playing unless they change it to, uh, a bunch in this game, a uh, new new update. I will increase my cast frequency modifier by 10 percent. That way we shoot more frequently. Yeah, now we shoot uh, 64 percent more frequently. That's pretty good. Get that to 100 percent, we'll shoot twice as fast as we normally would. Man, these guys have so much hit points. Even like the little goblin mage had 25,000 hit points. They are loaded on health up in the endless mode here. Alexi the Plague Bear. So the new endless mode uh, only summons one enemy at the time. And he had well, probably like 800,000 hit points, 700,000, a lot. Do I want to increase the area modifier of all nature skills by 30%? I mean, I guess we might as well. The poison cloud will, you know, hit more enemies as it's wandering around doing its thing here. We're just racking up the hundreds of thousands of damage on Alexi. We're, our DPS still seems fairly good here. So I think, I think it might... My damage over time going to polish you off? Should I keep focusing on aiming at you? I mean, it doesn't hurt to aim at you, right? I will increase my crit damage by an extra 5%. Critical strikes are kind of this guy's whole thing here. And we've taken out Alexi the Plague Bear here without too much problem, so that's good. Our damage is... Like, they had a ton of hit points. My damage was just insane. I remember the last time I did this, I was facing guys where the boss had like 2 million each, and like it was like untouchable amount of damage. So that tells you how much damage my, uh, my insane damage is here. Ooh, this is really good. I mean, increasing the bladed chakram for more rot also will be really good, but my critical strikes have a 50% chance of applying bleed to the target, which does, you know, bleed does 210 damage over 10 seconds, which is great because we crit strike like crazy. Now it's only going to take an extra 400 to get the next one out here, okay? Cast frequency of shoot would apply more for agility, which is not bad, but a 30% a 30 chance of my attacks applying poison is just even more poison out of these guys. I'm kind of relying pretty heavily on damage over time to, to like, mess up the bosses, and so more poison stack is good. I feel like the bomb barrage is kind of like not the real thing that's doing the work for us here. I'm not sure I want multicast on it. Well, these other choices aren't really, really blowing my mind here, so I'll have a 48% extra chance on the bomb barrage um, to multicast. Now it's up to 84% chance of multicasting, so we're going to have... When there's bombs in front of us, well, they're going to they're gonna do good things for us. I mean, it doesn't hurt by any means. I mean, I, I guess it's doing well on dealing with a riffraff in front of me. It was a, it was a good life choice. None of these. I feel like getting more damage on the shoot is kind of a waste. I guess we'll go for 10% more area of effect. I mean, I mean, I, 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 it all adds up, you know, make my bombs more likely to multi-hit on guys here. Oh, we got another lead down here. How fast are we going to melt you down? You are not melting nearly as quickly as last one did, but honestly, not terrible. You know, like five or ten seconds, not bad. I suppose we can give your uh, twin here the same treatment and melt them down fairly quickly. Yeah, our, our, our damage is... We're still doing really good on the damage front. I'm, I'm pleased. Area modifier, the bomb barrage by an extra 20%. I mean, I guess I'll take it. What's it up to? Um, 130% area modifier? That seems fine. Ooh, more frailty I think is really good. I think frailty might be like a part of the backbone of how, why our build is doing so well because we like, just like... The more we hit them, the more damage they take. We are leveling up so much. I'm level 69 already. Ooh, I'm going to pass up on the cast frequency of the frag shot for an extra 10% uh, uh, movement speed here. Gets us back up to 30% movement speed. So... I think I was at 35% at one point, so we're almost kind of like uh, back to where we were in the speed, which is good. So we can zoom, and also, if we get real, if we get a ton of movement speed, we can then start taking those Leviathans again. Like, get ourselves up to 40%, and we can grab a few Leviathans to get huge damage damage increases. Ooh, another agility is tempting, but I think 30% is not too bad. And give my crit damage chance by, up by an extra 10% is good, considering crit applies bleed. Now we have a 49% chance of applying crit, which is literally half of my attacks will be hitting crits. Ooh, another unbreakable. I do want this. Reduce all damage taken by two. So we're up to five damage reduction, which means the exploded guys, unless they've had a damage buff, will uh, not even hurt me, I think. Do I need another swift? Having four dashes is not bad. I mean, the multicast chance of skill shoot is also good, and it is legendary, but, I mean, the, the swift doesn't, like, that doesn't, like, the dash thing doesn't pop up very often at all. We're gonna take that, because having four dashes helped me to survive a lot longer against the bosses the last time I did this. Get this elite guy out of here, you're just handled. Ooh, it really wants to give me more movement speed. I, I, honestly, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take that movement speed. It's gonna hurt my DPS a little bit, but honestly, DPS is kind of, like, good as it is, and um, a lot of my strength comes from damage over time. And survivability is huge right now. I need to survive. Ooh, a rare versus an epic's choices. I feel like we got a fair bit of unbreakable stuff already. Whereas a flat 40% damage modifier increase on five of my weapon types is just... Like, that's too substantial of a DPS increase to ignore. Like, we're gonna need that. That's gonna be important. Uh, pass upon this. I will take an epic uh, tier uh, multicast chance of the poison bolt. What's it up to now? 144% multicast chance. So does that mean it's guaranteed to multicast every single time? And sometimes it'll like triple multicast? I don't really fully know how that works. I will take this little uh, 
thing that gives me stuff there, ores or whatever. See here, I can afford to take this Leviathan, 10% flat damage increase on everything for only 5% of my movement speed is fine. That's that's a good deal. Being able to grab those Leviathans is good. And we're still at, I believe, 35% movement speed, which is just fine and dandy. I'm feeling quite nimble and I have four dashes on top of it. If I, as long as I stay between 30 and 40% movement speed, I'm fine. I mean, a 30% damage increase on the bomb barrage is like, I mean, the powerful strikes is, what's better? 30% on one thing damage increase or 5% damage increase on six things? It's kind of like the same, isn't it? Just go for the rare, the rare, the higher rarity tier because it looks good. None of these. I will take an extra 30% uh, damage increase on the poison cloud. So that, so that'll do 1360 damage over 10 seconds to everybody that's in it for each instance of poison that they get hit with. And for every half second they're in it, they get hit with another. So it's going to just, it's all going to add up. Man, you level up like crazy in this game. I will take a rare attack speed for the bladed chakra. I'm to give it an extra 30%. That way it does that, uh, it applies that rot even more often because I think the rot is just a fantastic damage dealer for us. I think it's doing wonderful things. I would not be surprised if the rot is one of like the biggest damage dealers we have or the blade shocker, I guess, since it's the one applying the rot. I will take a flat damage increase of 10% at the cost of 5% movement speed. That is fine. We're still moving at 30% movement speed and our damage is up to 130%, which is that is that is substantial. Ooh, impending doom is really good. Every time you apply a stack of doom, which I think most of my attacks have a chance of doing. Look at all these things we have down here. There's a 50% there's a 50% chance of applying dazed and dazed makes it so that they have an increased chance to receive critical strikes by five percent for eight seconds so if we hit them with like a lot of stacks of dazed like i'll be critting almost every single hit i do and every crit i does applies bleed so we're just like just look at the number of status effects above their heads and look how much insane damage they take these big ogres have fifty thousand hit points almost it's crazy i will you know what i'm gonna go for critical damage chance by five percent um, although I don't know, don't know I fully need to, but we're at 54%. I feel like that one a skill we just got will make it so like they're going to be getting critted all the time anyways. But I wouldn't mind getting that critical strike chance up to 100%. Also, what happens when my critical chance goes above, above 100%? Do I get like super duper ultra criticals? Omega criticals? I will take a flat 10% damage modifier. That seems uh, good. Just no no real downside to that. Just 10% more damage across the board. Love it. All right, I got to take out these elites here. It's taking a while to get the bosses coming in, which makes sense because these guys have insane hit points and we're just leveling like crazy. Oh, so many good choices here. That rare Leviathan is tempting, but that put me down to like 15% movement speed, which I don't feel is enough. But more importantly, Gangrene, every time I hit for, hit him with Fragility, which is constantly between this and the fact that I have other things to make every attack maybe do Fragility, there's a 50% chance to apply Bleed for 360 damage over 10 seconds, so that's really going to add up nicely into my damage over time build for like, shoot the bosses a bit and then like dodge away and then damage over time doesn't say anything to him. Like right here, I'm going to hit you oh, with a bunch of attacks. We're going to run away and you're just going to take a, a subst look at the damage over time. I'm not even aiming at them and they're like hundreds of thousands of damage over time. That's huge. Get near you again. Shoot you a little bit more with the attacks there. Oh, never mind. Get interrupted by level up. Ooh, everything I have is considered a physical type and I can increase the area of effect of every physical type by 50% with this legendary upgrade. So we are definitely going to take that. I don't need the swift. I already have four dashes. I think four dashes is enough. And we'll keep going to fighting the boss here. The area of effect is even bigger, even better. And the boss is just melted and dead. We're so stupid strong. It's not even funny. I designed this build to be good at fighting bosses. Give the frag shot an extra 30% damage. That seems fine. It's at 875 damage now. Goes up to 950. It all adds up. None of these. Hmm. Do I want to lose 10% movement speed? I don't know that I do. But an extra 20% damage is hard to pass up. We're taking it. Every time you apply a stack of days, there's a 50% chance of applying burn as well. And I've got something that gives days. I forget what it was. Uh, impending doom. So... As I hit him with Doom, the, there's, that gives Dazed, and that Dazed will then give them Burn, which does 650 damage over time, so it's even even more abilities feeding into the damage over time. Mm, tough choice. Do I give three of my things uh, an area of effect increased by 30% or a 48% uh, multicast chance of the Poison Cloud? I'm going to go for the multicast chance because, you know, that's just more chances of each cloud, you know, damage over area of effect. Then again, area of effect also affects damage. I don't know. It's... I think either is a good choice. Man, it's just crazy when I see all these little blue... Look at the... Just look at the blue spam. Man, look at the size of the green poison things. Oh, man. Just beautiful. Beautiful carnage. We must be doing a good job melting enemies because I don't feel like there's not that, that many enemies on the screen. <gasps> Legendary multicast for the poison cloud by an extra 60%. So it was 48%. We take it now. It's up to 108%. So we just... We're going to have multicasting poison clouds like crazy and they'll just... Help me just attack over all as well. I see you, uh, serpent dude, and you're you're donezos. Another serpent dude, just done in a matter of seconds, like two seconds. 
Elite Serpent Dead. Hmm, I don't... My, my movement speed's already pretty, pretty low, so I might pass on the Leviathan here. Oh, here we go. Hypothermia. Every time I apply a stack of slow, which I, I did by the Ice Cloud thing earlier. Touch of Ice. So every attack I have has a 40% chance of applying slow. Every, and every time I hit it with that slow, that will give a 50% chance of applying even more fragility to increase even more damage over over time. So they're just going to be drowning in fragility uh, stacks to take more damage. So, slow equals damage. Wrecking enemies equals good. I already have one spontaneous combustion. If I get two, then 50% of my chances have, of my attacks have a chance of hitting with burn. So, why not? I'm sure burn will, like, factor into stuff as well. I don't know. It's it's getting hard to keep track of all the things that are comboing with other things. There's a lot of them. This game has, like, eight different damage over time effects. Got hit by a bomb there. Gotta be careful. That bomb did 10 damage. We need to be be, be careful. They, they're, they're hurting us. Although, I do heal 10 hit points every time I level up, which is good. Still melting elites like they're nothing. Love that for us. None of these. Honestly, I'm gonna take the Unbreakable to reduce all damage taken by two. Um, because I think that's probably gonna be pretty useful for survivability. I think that's one of the best ones, just like a flat damage decrease. Alright, Gamoth, the Amateur of Fire has come in with 2 million hit points. So let's go ahead and stack you with as much of these things as I can as possible. Can I hide behind this? Oh, I cannot, I cannot hide behind rocks from your fire. Oh my god, oh my god, Gamoth, your so, your, your fire. Gamoth is one of the hardest ones I find. Oh my goodness, like, this is why I need good mobility against- Oh, no, 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 need to get close to you, got half your hit points, I'm, like, my damage is insane, but your- your attacks are not to be trifled with at all. Bad time for this. Increase the multicast chance of all your skills of nature type by 24%? Yes, that'll give me more chance to hit you with poison and damage over time. No, 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 gotta stay away from you. I find the best defense against that guy's distance, he's dead, I melt him so quick. But he, oh, he put with the fear of life in me there. He's a, uh, he's not to be uh, messed around with. All right, what you got for me? Movement speed. The other things are tempting, but uh, oh man, some of these are good. But I, I need to move quick. The Gamuth is the real reason you gotta be able to move quick as a boss. That guy's. That one fire attack he does that, like, is really long and moves really fast and tracks you down really well, that thing will destroy you if you're not agile. And 30% move speed is, like, kind of like... 20% move speed did not feel like enough against him. I need to keep that 30% or above. Melting the enemies, though. Still no real threat here. Feeling strong. Feeling good. I mean, I took it on a 2 million hit point boss like they're nothing, so clearly we're good, right? You know what? Let's get another Fateful Strikes here, so then we'll have, what, 40% chance of applying Doom? Which is good because, like, Doom triggers other stats effects, which trigger other stats effects, which trigger other stats effects, and it's just like a, a circle of stats effects. Look at this elite. Let's go ahead and give them some love and some pain. Come here, nerd boy. Where you at? You are... You are a boss in your own right. Tricky part is staying near you, but I think my damage over time probably already took you out, I think. Ah, get away from the trees. Trees will be the death of me. Even, like, the regular guys have, like, 100,000 hit points, like the big ogres that aren't even elites. You know what? I will take a flat damage modifier increase of 5%, bring it up to 165%. It all adds up. Don't mind me over here being level 97. I think this is one of these, one of these games where your level's up. They don't, like... Some games, like kind of limit your levels up or like it just gets more and more expensive over time. I don't think that's the case with this game. It's like a flat rate to level up every no matter what. Get these elites out of here before the boss comes in. I can't deal with your shenanigans and your shenanigans don'ts. Those elites have like 300,000 hit points. Cast frequency increased by 15%. Sign me up. Fire my stuff more often. Alexi's the chaos bringer. All right, so let's see if we can melt you. you like almost 3 million hit points. Okay, man, that movement speed in the four dash is saving my bacon against this guy. Gotta keep it moving. Where you at? Gotta be careful. These bomb guys still hit me for eight damage in there. Good at sneaking up on me. Where you at? Oh, man, like these, these area of attacks, like their attacks are so big and so oppressive. I have to like run halfway across the map to get away from like the range of their attacks. Look at that. It's bonkers. I guess I'm one to talk about bonkers. Stop getting stuck on trees. Come on, get this guy. There you go, attack that's now like 10,000 million miles wide. We're doing the same damage to him, I just can't keep him like in my area of a field to attack for very long because of this insanely huge wide attack. Oh, he's, I guess we killed him, he's dead. His, his thing's gone in the top middle. Damage over time, it's good. I'm almost tempted to get another dash. Man, I could get another uh, legendary multicast for the frag shot. I don't think that's the thing that's carrying us though. Getting a, but getting a, a critical damage chance increased by 10% might be better than legendary, but it's a legendary though. It's hard to pass up a legendary, right? Now it's got 156 multi, uh, uh, multicast chance. I've been recording for almost an hour now. This is a long run. Hmm, area modifier bomb barrage. I'm gonna go for movement speed 10%. That way I'm up to, up to 40%. Honestly, I think I'd rather stay at 40% than 30%. Some of these bosses, like the range I wish they can attack you from is so absolutely insane and they track you so well. You just need just insane movement speed to deal with it. Damage is still cracked though. These guys just melt under my DPS my DOT. As long as I don't get stuck on a tree or killed by a bomb guy, we're gonna be fine. I think. Famous last words, right? I am starting to lose focus, though. It's been an hour of me just dodging and aiming and talking. 
and thinking, a man can only focus so long. Ooh, that's like four green things at once. That's awesome. Big green circles on the ground poisoning everybody. Ooh, another faithful strike. So yeah, I think, I think it's like 60% chance now to apply doom and that'll give even more status effects and just status effects upon status effects upon more of those as we melt and dodge. Man, it's, it's getting dicey. I wish the bosses came out sooner. I feel like I'm having to play the first thing all over again. What happened to the whole enemies come with, like, bosses come more and more frequently? Did I, like, have the settings wrong? Did I pick the wrong one? Must have. Maybe it's random. There's supposed to be, like, two different new endless modes. One's a regular endless mode. The other one's, like, boss chaos. You know what? I will get the, uh, the touch of ice. That way I'll have two of them. Then I have an 80% chance to apply slow. And what that'll do is that'll... Like, my slow triggered some other effect, and, you know, they'll just increase the odds of hitting them with everything. Watch out for the bomb, guys. They still hit me for 8 damage. The fact that I healed 10 hit points every level up is very, very useful. All right, Tiagro, the Internal Guardian. You seem to be one of the ones that's a little bit more easy to deal with. You've got, like, 4 million hit points. Oh, now you're doing your thing. I gotta dodge away from that, luckily. Insane mobility. Just kind of work on you. Oh, it's just so hard to deal with all the riffraff on the screen and aim at you at the same time, but we're doing our best melting you. Like millions, you've got a little chakram blade too. Do we go for the touch of ice again for the same reason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although crit damage chance also would have been a fine choice. Uh, there's just so many of you. Look like I can kind of sort of dash through you guys without taking too much damage. Tiagro should be dying to my damage over time any second now, I think. And melted. We're doing great. Okay, we did it. Now what happens now? Oh, level up. I guess damage modifier of the frag shot seems fine. So it says escape the void or go deeper. So I can just do this forever? I kind of want to just like end it now because it's been an hour of me recording. But I'll do it. I'll, I'll at least check it out. I, I think like die or win this point like i still get the same rewards either way yeah so you'd like oh i think you're supposed to like choose which mode you want for some reason only the one's popping up for me maybe i gotta unlock the other i guess we'll go deeper all right it says eliminate the void lords the void again let me guess i gotta kill 400 to do it yeah 400 to do it so it's, it's just gonna be the same thing over and over again with um more more hit points i think maybe what i'll do is i'll just won't say anything until like the boss comes i won't go over the upgrades i get each level just to kind of like speed it along in the video here because it's getting ridiculous. I actually feel like I'm melting these enemies quicker in this one than the last one. I guess we're stronger. I mean, I got to mention this epic power damage increase on every, on five of my attacks by 40%. Yes, please. Another epic. Bro, I, like, I got to mention the, the good stuff. Frontal by 36% multicast chance. Yes. Yes, give. Oh, here we go. Alexi's the Chaos Bringer. Only 2 million hit points. But I remember when we did the last endless level, um, the first boss only had like 600,000 hit points. So I imagine the last boss is going to have like 10 million, but that was... Phew. Get melted, scrub. <laughs> Ooh, every time I apply a stack of poison, a 50% chance of applying doom as well. That's going to be pretty good here. These these very like unique powers like that, where like, you hit him with this, you also hit him with this. You, like, getting those is really good, I'm finding. Also, I am more damaging than I've ever been. I am melting these guys so insanely quickly. I'm just, I'm not even, like, commenting all the epics. I'm, like, getting really good lots, lots of epics and rares right now. We're just, like, just the, the, like, look how quickly we're dealing hundreds of thousands of damage on these guys and just, like, melting them with the night in there. It's so good. I guess being level 125 is pretty good. My one gripe is it's taking forever for the enemies to appear for me to get the next Void uh, Lord already. All right, here we go. Call Myth, the Avatar of Ice. Where are you at, buddy? You hang out here in the corner, we got like 3 million hit points, a little over 3 million. I'm gonna go ahead and hit you with a bunch of stacks of that. I'll get interrupted by, interrupted by level up if I can talk. More damage than poison bolt, sure. I'm gonna dash away because I can get him boxed in my, by my boys. And the damage over time did just did like the bulk of the work and he's dead. So easy. And now we wait for another boss that is Lord of the Void. Also, I'm at like 100% movement speed so I've got a bunch of rare movement speed offers and I took them. So we're zooming. I'm not sure, but I think movement speed affects my dashes. Maybe not. I just felt like I was zooming really far with my dashes. Maybe not. All right, Alfred the Fallen King, let's do this. Where you at, buddy? You have 4.6 million health. All right, are you one of the guys that does like those crazy oppressive? That bomb guy hit me for 17 damage. That's dangerous. I, oh, I'm more concerned about the bomb guy sneaking up on me than I am fighting the boss. Where you at, sir? Come on, come on. There you are. I, oh, I, I need, I need bomb dude defense. I've already done half his hit points, just like accidentally shooting him off the screen by coincidence, just aiming the general area, and he's dead. It wasn't even on my screen. The bomb dudes are gonna be are gonna be like a real threat real soon, though. Eventually, they're going to, like, insta-kill me, I think. All right, here we go. Gamoth, the Avatar of Fire. Oh, no, this is the one who has, like, insanely long-range attacks. I'll have to try and fight you from a distance. Keep my things on cooldown. No, no, not that. Not that's, that's the really dangerous... Oh, my God, that's oppressive how far that thing fires away from. He had, what, like, 6 million hit points or something like that? I need to get close to you when you're not doing your oppressive, fiery thing. Where are you? Where are you, evil fire-shooting boy? I don't know where you're at. I'd love to. 
but I don't. There you are, fireman. Oh, he's doing the thing. He's doing the thing. Nope. As soon as I got there, he does the thing. He leaves a trail of fire. I can't really walk past either. Also an issue. But, but I'm so fast, I can actually walk around it. Four million damage modifier on his on him. That's insane. I saw that 4M sitting on his body, and he's dead. Just handled. Having 100% movement speed, pretty useful. I'm down to 88 hit points, so it clearly took a lot of damage there. Mo probably mostly from, like, bumping into bomb guys. All right, there's only 200 enemies left until the final boss appears, so I think we'll go back to, like, just showing how broken the build has become against, like, the, the tankiest, strongest, most damagingest enemies we've we've ever faced in this run. Like, each, like, that one little itty-bitty spider, 40,000 hit points. That one, 32,000 hit points. And that guy, that, that one wolf, 84,000 hit points. And we're just dishing out the damage like it's absolutely nothing. Remember when our, we first started? Our arrows were doing, like, 120 damage well guess what now they're doing a whole lot more than that and let's keep walking around bodying these guys showcasing the insane damage um and then the boss is gonna come in okay there's an elite right there and they're hip and they're dead they're dead they're instantly dead oh gotta be careful my biggest enemy is just like trees and rocks and getting stuck on those and it's not like they protect you much either. The, the Like, the bosses can shoot their special abilities, I think, through the rocks. So it's not like you're getting some kind of free protection here. Here comes Tiagro, the Eternal Guardian. I want to get away from the corner there, because there's a lot of enemies there. And I can't really see what you're doing so much. Come here, Tiagro. Where are you? Avoid the little guys. There you are. You are... Okay, this is this guy. I will take uh, damage that costs a little bit of speed. Dodge behind you. I got hit for 70 because I ran into you like an idiot. That's a problem. Do that again, and I'm dead. Oh, don't get hit by that. Where are you, Tiagro? Oh, you're dead, because my damage... Well, I, 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 t I fired at you for two seconds, and and, and that's it. That's insane. Ooh, thermal shock. Every time I apply burn, 50% chance of applying slow. That's cool. All right. At this point, I think we've proven how insanely overpowered this build is. I think I could go through wave after wave after wave of this endless build and just keep playing. It's been an hour and almost 20 minutes I've been playing. I feel like I could go for two or three hours, just level after level after level. But like, it's like, I've like, we've proven it. Like, it's real good. Also, I would prefer the other endless mode where it's more, uh, more, more void bosses as opposed to like start over and like, okay, kill 400 and the boss appears. I don't prefer this endless mode. I want to try the new endless mode, but I don't know how to unlock it. We'll figure out the time. Here we go. We win. 54 million damage dealt by the shoot. The shoot was actually pretty good on the damage. Look at that prestige 12. That was great. And this was with, well, this was with four curses. 22,000 DPS on my shoot. 33,000 DPS on the frag shot. Only 10,000 on bomb barrage. And only 11,000 on the bladed chakram. I wonder if the rot that the bladed chakram applies doesn't get counted towards that. Or maybe the rot wasn't as good as I thought. I don't know. But overall, everything, for the most part, seemed to do pretty good work for us. I'm very pleased with how overpowered this run was. Like, we didn't beat just, we didn't, we didn't just beat Endless Mode cycle, two cycles of it. We dominated it. I probably could have gone for three, five, ten cycles if I had the patience, but it just takes forever. It's like 20 minutes per cycle to slowly beat all the enemies to get the bosses to finally summon. Hey, look, a new character. I think I'll, I think I'll play them next time. Unlock them. Since we got the Sentinel in, uh, that's who we just played as, if you, if you forgot. Since we got them to Prestige 10, I can new I can now buy their new weapon, the Spread Shot, which affects our stats differently. It has a new weapon, and it costs these resources here, Copper, Iron, and Emerald. And uh, it does cost two Hateful Soul Stones, so I'm hesitant to do it, but let's do it. That way, whenever we come back to them next, we can do it again with a different starting weapon. Hey, we unlocked a rune somehow, but it costs two runic power, and I only have one. What a bummer. It would, it would block 15% of damage, which would be really nice. I need more rune power. How do I get more rune power? Oh, I need 10 of these blue things. I don't have them. Can I, like, reset the skills to get them? I can, but I only got one back. I guess I've only spent one on here. Oh, well. Ooh, I can finally afford to get ourselves a uh, banished power-up. I think we get that. Never mind. I need those five soul stones to get the re-roll. I can get five re-rolls now. That's pretty nice. Hey, look at that. I got all these things down here fully maxed out. That's pretty cool. On the green side. I've got almost everything maxed out. We're getting pretty close to having this maxed. Then we can focus on the runic stuff. But that's it for now. Smash that like button. Let's go.